It all started with the Mzanzi Initiative. This was an initiative amongst the banking sector in South Africa to bring the unbanked into the banking system. And collectively, the banking sector then designed a product, low-cost product that is called Mzanzi. And I think Mzanzi delivered mixed results in that on the positive side, um, about six million Mzanzi accounts were actually opened, which was very good. We were all excited and all of that. But on the negative side is that most of the banks reported losses on the account. As a result of the low customer usage, the activity levels were actually very low, high dormancy rates, and you know that resulted in losses being made. So I can imagine that you know for some time the banks were cautious about really just increasing their presence, um, you know, in the low income, especially using Zanzi. But I must say that all of that has changed. All of that has changed. The banks have once again entered the financial inclusion space and virtually every single bank in South Africa at this point in time um, is pursuing a financial inclusion strategy. The banks have introduced new models that are low cost. A lot of the banks are offering mobile banking. A lot of the banks have got smarter ATMs and they have partnerships with the retailers, including the smaller retailers within the community. So I think, you know, um, I can safely say that the banks have now got models that will help them to participate fully in the financial inclusion space. There are lots and lots of positive initiatives happening right now in South Africa. A number of banks obviously learned from the Mzanzi failure because when Mzanzi was launched, the banks relied more on the traditional retail banking model. But I must also say that there was a small bank in South Africa, which is still around, called Capitec which came up with low, a low cost model and you know Capitec was very very successful it is still successful today and i think in a way Capitec you know uh, provided an example that actually you know it is possible um, to 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 do business at the bottom end uh, in a sustainable way all you need to do is find the right models and you know, there are examples all over the, all over the world. I think that, you know, um, uh, the banks learned from, especially the Brazilian agency model, because, you know, uh, that provided a very good example of how agents can be used um, to extend banking uh, to the low income. And remember that most of the banks also provide the point of sale devices you know, because they've got uh, acquiring, uh, they've got me the merchant acquiring businesses, they've got an, a whole network of point of sale devices that can be used and uh, they are actually using that. Uh, so I think it was a combination of learning from, you know, some of the low cost banks, the newer, you know, entrants like, you know, Capitec, but secondly, learning from what is happening all over the world uh, in terms of serving the low income market. It starts from how you open a bank account, right? At the moment, uh, rather than, especially, and I'm talking about low value transactions, when people open bank accounts, there are a number of banks that have got, you know, are using smartphones, which enable their agents or enable their own sales staff to open an account anyway. And you know those smartphones would have, for example, a digital camera which is capable of taking you know pictures um, of an ID, um, and 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 you know 
those are also integrated with the back office of the banks. So, you know, nobody really needs to go into a bank. Um, if you want to, you can open an account anywhere. It's really moved beyond just microcredit to people being able to, you know, open accounts remotely, people being able to um, withdraw money and, 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 and do deposits outside of the branch, but also people being able to send money and to buy other things like prepaid airtime and prepaid electricity. Yeah? I mean, some of these functionalities are also available on point of sale devices. You know, when, um, uh, you know whenever uh, people want to withdraw money and they don't want to travel all the way you know, to, to a branch ATM, uh, all they need to do is walk into a store and, you know, if the store owner is an agent, they can do a whole host of transactions. They can, they can check their balances, they can get a mini statement, they can do a cash-in transaction, a cash-out transaction, they can transfer money, do prepaid airtime, prepaid electricity. So a whole range of, 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 of transactions can be done. And also, people can apply for a loan using their mobile you know so these things are possible now and i'm talking about people at the bottom end of the market being able to do this